Jones from North Queensland. I'm doing a series on the forehead fly and its management with the local species Tetragonula hocking's eye. This video, introduction. So, what is a forehead fly? Well, there you are. You can see the buggers. They're running around the place at the moment. Note their size, about half the size of a normal bee, but you can tell them by that darting motion. You can see it all around the place there. And this hive is under attack. More on that in a minute. You can see them darting around. They're small. They're also called sewer flies, toilet flies, sink flies. They normally have a little hunch back if you look real close, but as far as I can tell, no one's ever... No I can't get close enough to see them. They just dart around a lot. So, what's the life cycle of these flies? As the name suggests, they breed virtually anywhere. So, all because they're around your hive doesn't mean you've got a problem. They're found in toilets. They're found in the sink. They're found in rotting manure. They're found in compost. In fact, anywhere where there's a bit of moisture, you're going to find these little blighters running around doing their thing. So, why do they come into a native beehive? Well, sometimes they're doing it just for a feed or shelter for the night. See how they dart around? That darting motion allows them to outmaneuver the slower native bees. And that's one of their main methods of getting into a hive. They dart and run so quick, the poor bee, before it has time to wake up and say, oh shit, what's happening? It's in, running around and even inside the hive. While it's running around, nobody can get to it because it's too quick. So they go in there just for a feed, just like any fly landing on your face and wanting a drink. These flies do that. Now this hive that we're looking at here, this was the hive that came under attack from a swarm about a week ago. And that swarm weakened the hive. When a swarm weakens the hive, if you look under the swarming videos, you'll see that the guard bees drop right off. And when the guard bees drop right off, that allows these flies to make an entry. And they won't, they won't miss an opportunity. They'll initially go in there for a free feed. But if they think they can get away with it, as you've seen from the management series coming up, they'll actually try to breed in it, just like any fly laying maggots on a suitable food source, these flies will do the same thing. Now you know when you're in real trouble is where you, when you see these flies and what they will do is mate up in pairs. So what happens is the male will fly out in the morning and it will look for a female. When it finds a female it mates with them and then they look like a normal size bee. But here's the interesting bit. Once they mate with them, they, they're together and they fly around a suitable source. So you'll see them come in and they'll just fly backwards and forwards in front of here. And real crafty for forehead flies is the male will actually guide the female almost to the entrance and then disengage from the female and the female virtually just walks straight into the food source, in this case, a beehive. Now this is still a strong hive. I had a look at it and worked out that it can recover and fight for itself. But you can help it in the management of it. I put this hose here for two reasons. The first reason is a rather simple one. Yes, it's to force the flies to show themselves. Otherwise, they just dart straight in and you don't see them. So that's to show you the little flies buzzing around. And I think in the video, you would have seen one crawl into the tube. Now, if 
the bees can pack a tube dense enough. Hopefully we can get that. Oh, I don't know if we can or not. Not really. I'll show you another hive that's very healthy. And uh, you'll see what I mean by dense enough. If you pack a hive dense enough or make the entry tunnel long enough, the bees will actually eventually catch the flies through just sheer luck. And they kill them. And I've seen this hive removing forward flies and their eggs. So this hive's doing its job. But because it was weakened by the fighting swarm, what did I do? I put, I extended the entry tunnel and I just put in a hose of slightly smaller diameter and that's solely so that they got a better chance of pushing away these bastards. There's another fly bloody buzzing around. There's flies constantly buzzing around this entrance. What you normally see is flies go in and anywhere between 30 seconds and a minute they try to run the gauntlet, can't run the gauntlet, and what do they do? They get either pushed out or eaten. You can tell when something's on because all the guard bees, just like then, dart out. And what they've done there is pushed out a forehead fly. So when you saw that motion, that darting out of the head's motion all at once, they pushed out a forehead fly. So they're repelling the attacks of the forehead fly. So this hive's doing okay. It's a bit like a medieval castle and watching them repel the invaders. That's what they're doing. But if you want to see how dense they pack an entry... Oh, before I get onto that. How do they attract... What happens is... Oh, I'm getting myself all tongue-tied. Untongued. Where's that bloody tongue denotted? There's that tool. Yeah. Got it. All right. To attract more flies to a hive and overwhelm a hive or a food source is what we're looking at for forehead bees you've got to somehow attract more of your mates and if you ever squash a forehead flies it's got this very acrid uh, smell and when they get into a hive they release that smell you can smell it at the entrance sometimes and that attracts more forehead flies to come have a look. See, there's one there crawling around the back at the moment. And they'll try to find ways into the hive. But if they can't find a way into the hive, what do they do? They'll just mass in at the front. Now, they'll charge the front as many flies as possible to overwhelm the defenders. So what do native bees do? They pack the entries. What deters forward flies is a strong hive with lots of activity. The activity of bees around the front deters them from looking in the entrance hole. So, a good strong hive. What's the second thing? Let's see if I get that right. Yeah, packed um, entry hole to the tunnel. Utterly packed. There's about three layers deep in there. You can only see the first layer. They're all in defense mode because there's forward flies everywhere at the moment. And why are there forward flies everywhere at the moment? Well, that's because we're in drought in Townsville. And when I checked what hives were attacked by the attacking swarm, what did I find out? Well, that's interesting. There's a, there's a young male being chased out of the hive. That's a male that they don't want, and so they're chasing it out. It's only just hatched, but it's been determined as no good. They've evicted it. More on that on another time. So, with this drought, all three hives that were attacked had a decent food store in them. This one repelled best. The other hive around the corner repelled. Um, got damaged severely and that's what attracted the flies and the other hive in the series that we're repairing got a major infestation interestingly the drought is so severe that I had a number of other hives that weren't attacked I wondered why well that was easy to determine rather easy to determine had no food in it I've got a number of beehives at the moment that are just living day-to-day, -day, if you like, concentration camp style. They had no re food reserves. 
And that again tells you about forehead flies. They're after the food, the honey, more importantly the pollen. They are not after the brood. But the whole hive dies because what happens is the honey and pollen collapse in a stinking mess that kills the rest of the hive off. So, there's your introduction. Now we'll get on to how to manage.